hey, today I'm going to convert the simplest app I could find from Elf to State Adapt. For those who don't know, I've been trying to battle test State Adapt uh, so I can release 1.0 really soon. And it's going pretty well so far. I have a small collection of bugs that I'm going to release in a new minor version. Or maybe I'll just release it in 1.0 because they're pretty minor bugs. So anyway, but yeah, so this is part of the category videos that I'm making that like are um, coding, just coding. So uh, I talked about this in a couple videos ago, but I'm going to do like three types of videos now. One is going to be just coding. So uh, I'm going to just show myself solving problems and uh, something that I kind of enjoy, but I'm going to make the thumbnail distinct from other types of videos. The other two types are going to be like reaction videos. If something interesting happens and I really want to comment on it, I can make a video for that. And then the other one is going to be like more polished and I'll write articles at the same time I do the videos. So, so this is just a coding one. So, all right, let's get started then. Here's the app. It's incredibly simple. You select the user, you set whether they're or you set them as active. So in other words, you select them. And then it's demonstrating a bug with Elf where if you update something, it sets it resets it as active or something. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm just gonna convert the code over. So, you know, it's worth zooming in. I'm already zoomed in a lot apparently. Well, I can this amount is pretty good. Okay, so let's look at the code. It looks pretty simple to me, very simple. So the repository is Elf's file name for um, state management for a certain type of, well, it's like a store, but it's, it's called repository because they're like separate files or separate variables, whatever, exports. Except in Angular, um, people like to do class style with Angular, so it's just a single class. So yeah, it feels to me like, like it should just be called store. But anyway, so yeah, I am just going to start converting this because this is really simple. But they're just using entity, and then they have active ID. This is a special utility exported from Elf. And just from removing this many imports, that's going to reduce lines of code. That's not very interesting, but um, it doesn't take that much work to get active ID stuff working in State Adapt either. I already did that in a video, maybe two or three videos ago. So yeah, and they're just doing selectors and they're doing methods in order to, to select from state using these utilities. The difference is I'm going to create a store with state adapt and it's going to automatically have methods like this on it. So I will not be wrapping these. I don't believe in that kind of decoupling. I think decoupling should be top, uh, top level for like downstream. It should be downstream. So decoupling should be during the like downstream phase. So when you have an event from the UI, it should make the simplest change to a single place. And so that should be fairly tightly coupled. And then if you want to have more flexibility, you handle it downstream. So that's the general approach. And that's gonna be the main difference between these two approaches. Automatically generated methods with entity utilities. And so the bundle size will probably be bigger, just like last time. But yeah, I'm not sure this is a real bug <laughs> because they're updating an entity. Of course, it's going to emit again. Why wouldn't it? Where's the console log? That is interesting. Yeah, it should emit. Yeah, <laughs> of course it should emit. Okay. Yeah. They updated it, so. Well, actually the ID didn't change, right? So it shouldn't emit. It should, it should just output the same exact user. So I'm gonna convert this and see how things go. 
you know what? I think this isn't a bug. I think this is how Elf has to behave. Because they're using observables as selectors. This is the diamond problem. I think. Because, yeah, they have a parent state object, selecting active ID, selecting um, the, uh, what do you call it, the entity, combining those, that's a diamond, they're going to each emit independently, and then, well, actually no, it shouldn't emit, right? Because they're setting the ID, it should just should just have a distinct until changed on it. Anyway, that is interesting to think about. If you update both at the same time, it would emit twice, probably. But I don't know how ELF works internally, so whatever. Okay, there's a lot of interesting uh, code in here. This is initial state. It shouldn't be in this file. Maybe that's how they do it in Elf, but that isn't that isn't very good. Um, it's not declarative at all. This this should be in the store. Okay. So other than that, they just have some simple events. So yeah, I'll be getting rid of a lot of this imperative scattered stuff. It'll be very very um, focused on each feature. But yeah, so. This is simple. I like it. Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to start. Okay. I just did npm install for the three core ArxJS and state, uh, Angular. Um, these three. And uh, I'm still using version 61. So for ArxJS, that has the bug where it's depending on version 60 of core because of the ng packager weird. Um, race condition, probably. So I had to just go in and manually change that to version 61. By the time I release this video, ver stated at 1.0 should be out. But anyway, I probably won't be changing very much, so this is still going to be relevant. So, um, all right. I mean, this bug won't be there, but yeah. Okay, now I'm going to plop it into the app component, app module. There it is. Okay. That's another advantage Elf has. It doesn't need a provider. It's provided in root. Maybe I should look into doing that for state adapt. Okay, now the exciting part. So how I like doing it is I like putting entities in its own property. So I'm going to create state here. And it's gonna have active ID. Um, what is the initial state? It's going to be one or something, right? I, yeah, why isn't, why that should just be in the store then. So these are numbers. ID will be a string. Hmm, why is that a number? I don't know, that doesn't seem... Anyway, who knows? Okay, create entity adapter. And as usual, it's not giving me a suggestion from state adapt because it's a secondary import from core. Uh, core adapters. Okay, anyway, so I'll put user as the entity and the adapter will be empty empty what is going on here i may spell it oh that that is that's not smart i'm doing a state interface here that's pretty funny okay now i can do the adapter be join adapters with state Hey, there we go. What's up with that? 
oh, it's doing adapters being mad that I don't have everything in there yet. So active ID. Yep, still doesn't know. So I'm going to do base string adapter here. Because string has a lot of methods on it and I don't need any of them. So just the it's just like doing create adapter with string. And you know, maybe I should just do that every time so people don't have to know about the base string adapter. But this is fine. And then you always have to close it off. But I have to implement some extra things here. So um active user. So it'll be s dot um, you well active ID of course. No, it's going to be users entities. So s dot users entities, and then you yes, grab it like that. That was easy. And we have set active ID that's here already. Uh, I'm going to call it user. All right, because it's just better that way. Uh, it's more, it's more expressive. So yeah. And get active user. So yeah, this is so easy. I'm going to go move that initial state out of here now. So get out of here. What the reload data? This will just be reset. This is unnecessary because it's initial state. So let's do this then. So we got state adapter. Um, Uh, we'll we'll just do all of it. Initial state. Nope. Do one. I don't know why it's users. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Huh. Okay. All right. Okay. What's up with you? Oh, oh, right, of course. I need to get the initial state. Right, and I added this to state adapt, but for now, we have to manually pass in the state. Is that how it is? Uh, I'm getting carried away. Um... Does it take in and I think it takes in an initial state. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so, okay, so we're gonna do some things up here first. Um, okay, I'm gonna paste that there for now. I'm gonna call this users adapter. Okay. And then we're going to do, yeah, initial state. We can do initial state now. And we're actually use the user's adapter to, uh, no, 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 no. Where, where is, this is the adapter. Oh, 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 right. Oh, that's create entity state, not the adapter. I need this thing. Okay. All right. Okay. Set all. Um, where's initial? Well, we need, so we need the initial state. 
create entity state. Okay, and then, hey, I think it's getting the idea. Hey, where did those users go? Did I erase those? I did. Let's see if they're in my history here. Here they are. Go. Look at that. <laughs> so there you go. You can take <clears throat> an array of your entities and pass them into set all as the payload. And this will return your full entity state with these as the entities. And you just need to grab this for the very initial state. So it's a, it's a little tricky. In the future, it's just better to do create entity state and pass in. Uh, I, think, I think I'll be able to do that. Uh, just pass in the entities, but this totally works. You just have to have the adapter defined first, and then you can do it like this. So this, I will actually move down now. Um, maybe I should do it in line just for readability then. Yeah, I'm going to do it in line. Const initial users, users state equals mm. Okay, now initial user state. There we go. So there's entity stuff. And then we got this. And here we'll just have the adapter, users adapter. Okay, this could also just be called users entity adapter and I could call this users adapter because I'm probably just gonna call the whole store the user store. But anyway, I think this works. So let's take that all away. Now we have um, import that. So yeah, users initial state. I, I don't think, yes, that works ish. Okay. All right, now we're going to have mm, this dot store dot um, users count. Cool. Users, and this is all entities, so this is going to be users all. And for update users, so we're upserting entities. I'm going to move this comment to preserve the line of code here. And just comment this right here. Okay, set active user, we're just setting the active user ID, that's really easy. So now we just need, oh, they're grabbing it by ID? No, they're not, they're just selecting it like that. I'm not sure why. No, <laughs> there we go. Yep, and that came from this selector we defined here. So just to see I'm going to save that and we'll see what it turns into. Oh yeah, and these are all gone from elf. This project's a little more sensitive on the line width. And it went from 41 to 56, so more lines of code. 41 to 56. But you know what, that's a bunch. So we'll see how it ends up in the end. Anyway. So now it's time for this. And as part of converting state adapt, I get rid of imperative code. Where do I, okay. This dot user, no. Repository. Uh, 
Yeah, and then it goes away. Okay, that worked. Um, okay, that's gone. Selected user ID. Uh, I'm just going to do the same thing. Active user ID. What? Oh, this is going to be on store. Whatever. Set active. Okay, reload data. Huh. Oh. It's upsetting. Well, if it resets. So yeah, in the end, it turns out that wasn't a bug in their project because they're literally updating, they're creating new objects. That's what this is supposed to do. So literally a new active user is gonna be emitted. So why wouldn't that happen? So I just have to figure out what to do. Oh, and we're gonna pipe and tap this apparently. So that goes right here, right here. Yeah. Okay, so now I just have to figure out what to do about this. Do I do upsert? Probably should. Resetting would literally return the same reference. And so it wouldn't cause this to change. So I probably should do upsert. <sighs> That's annoying. But I'm going to do it up here. Okay. Users are now available. So I will upsert users. Okay. I need to make them available. Because if I don't, then I can't access it in the template and then I'd have to create an imperative call. So yes, I'm very serious about, um, yeah, keeping things as reactive as possible. So we'll call it reload data, just like they did. But this is going to be Hey, <laughs> it's actually going to be upsert. What? Users. Oh, upsert users. That's what it's called. Upsert users many. Hmm. Oh, it is a function, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you just pass users into it. Okay, looks good. Active user ID. Okay. NG model, come on. No. NG model change. Set active user ID. Okay. Ooh, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. I mean, what what am I gonna do? I mean, like, like that's yes. I did notice this this UI was redundant because you're selecting and then you're selecting. 
Um, I guess the behavior should stay the same, right? Uh, fine. Yeah, that's not even complete, so I won't bother saving that. All right, let's keep the same stupid behavior. Set active user ID. Can we? Does that work? Um, apparently. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Reload data users. Okay. Uh, organize imports. And that one's already organized. I think we're done. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Nope. What is happening? Any events? <laughs> oh, object pointer event. Great. So the two string doesn't work, but it didn't tell me. <laughs> Man, this is annoying. Oh, I'm dumb. I need to pass in the actual value instead of some event. Let's see if that works. Okay. Create new lines of code. Great. Well, let's try it. Hey, that worked. And active user is changing just like it should. And it's logging for reload just like it should. Okay. Nice. So I guess I'm done. All right. So it looks like 64 insertions, 71 deletions. So almost the same. It's a 10% change. Here's how the template changed. Just use the method from the store. Uh, sent the string up. It expanded to three lines. Oh well. I had to, so reload data. I passed in users, which I attached to the component. Um, so here was that method. Reload data. I moved this comment here, by the way. I need to update that though. Oh, it's too late. It's in a commit. Oh, well, I guess, I guess the comments will, will lie. Okay. <coughs> so reload data. That is just going to do upsert many. And so I need to pass in the users here because I thought the users should be located where the user store was defined. Just makes more sense up there, even though I have to refer to it in the template. So passing up context and whatever from the template is not a problem. Data goes down, events go up. Sometimes those events need context or arguments. In this case, it's, it's like a, it's a, a single method call, which is the same as like dispatching an event to a single source. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty common. Binding data down, passing it back up for state changes. That's fine. And then I'm just directly selecting instead of having these extra imperative statements. So getting rid of the imperative statements and these annoying methods with extra imperative statements, that was a big deal. So, uh, and, and as far as the store itself, I'm going to add one line of code here, but then the store itself is pretty simple. Over here, they just do their typical elf stuff, compose, state properties, select with the utilities, and over in, in the state up side, it's got utilities that it kind of just inherits onto itself. And so, you know, I could have, I could have actually turned this into an injectable with like a factory and, and then it wouldn't, you wouldn't have store dot store. It would just be called user store. Uh, I probably should have done that, but I don't care that much. Um, this is fine. Just setting properties the way they did like that. And yeah, so yeah, it all comes from the adapter patterns. Uh, you compose state, so you have users, 
and then you have user adapter. It is an adapter for managing each of these users. And then initial state, I get from using the set all with the initial entity state and users. I may figure out a way to just put it in here because you can pass initial entity state, but then you have to pass both IDs and entities in and I'd rather just, I'd honestly rather do this. But it would be nice if this was just, you know, create entity state from all, something like that, just a single function. Anyway, so that's the user entity stuff. And then we have the, the entire state object in general. I, I could have decreased, like got rid of that line break because these are all together. Look at this, active user ID, active user ID, active user ID, users, 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 entity state, initial user entity state, user entity adapter, and then string, string, string. Okay. So, and then active user, this is the benefit you get from entity on the elf side. It's just a single utility. Well, it's set active ID and then uh, with active ID and then you get active entity. This is me defining get active entity basically. And then set active user ID that automatically comes on the adapter as part of this. And then the um, the selector as well, it also comes with it. So yeah, pretty, pretty basic stuff. This was a quick one. So I'm going to count the imperative statements now. I'm going to count ng model as an imperative statement because this is changing something that's somewhere else it's defining it. So that is the point of imperative is it's controlling something somewhere else. So yeah, so I counted 11 total for elf. I didn't count the console log though. I don't care about the console. So it ends up being three total for state adapt. Okay, so we got 73% less imperative, more reactive, 10% less lines of code. Now let's look at the bundle size. Yep, state adapt is bigger. State adapt is 184 kilobytes and their thing is 177. So seven kilobyte difference, just like the last app. Man, I'm going to have to start doing more NGRX conversion projects so I can feel better about the bundle size of state adapt. Well, at least it's more reactive and less code usually um, because of the way I convert things. But elf, so elf, it's going to be more imperative. That's the thing with elf. It's going to be more imperative, probably. Yeah especially on larger apps. So I should work on more um, sophisticated apps now. Anyway, so that that's the conclusion. We get um, seven more kilobyte bundle size. Compared to this, I mean, the transfer size is only like a two kilobyte difference. So that's, that's you know, barely noticeable. Um, and it's be I think it's mostly because of ELF's, the way it imports things. So in a way, yes, you have to have more lines of code with ELF because you have to use those utilities directly. And it makes sense to define repository class methods where you use them. So you don't have to import them into the component. So that actually makes sense. So yeah, on balance, ELF and state adapter are similar. ELF is more uh, fine grained imports and utilities and more imperative. So it does less for you. And that means it's going to have a smaller bundle size. I think the bundle size is worth it personally, but that's why I created state adapt and not elf. So that's, I want the, I want to make things as reactive and minimal as possible. So with that, I think that's about it. All right, see ya.